Merit had lupus, a disease in which the immune system is overactive. Her antibodies turned against her, attacking her own tissues and organs. When it first struck, Merit was 11 years old. Doctors prescribed powerful drugs to curb the self-destruction. But the drugs had unpleasant side effects. This picture was when I was in, like, the eighth grade, I believe. I was on 80 milligrams of steroids a day because they didn't know what to do. So they picked steroids as the route. And steroids not only made my face look like a, I swallowed a blimp, but it m made my hair fall out. So every morning I went to breakfast and I, my hair would fall in my food or I'd get up and there, there was hair all over my pillows like I was 70 or so. Quite honestly, the effect of the drugs terrified me. I thought it was, again, psychologically damaging as well as physically damaging. And I had doubts um, about whether her body could recover from such stringent, um, tough treatment and what this was doing to her spirit. Merritt's mother is a clinical psychologist. She knew that Robert Ada had experimented on mice that had lupus. Using Pavlovian conditioning, Ada had taught the lupus mice to suppress their overactive immune systems. The mice were then able to survive longer without the need for drugs. What I read in the Ada and Cohen paper was that these little mice had been given sugar water and um, the medication and that their immune systems had been contained or suppressed or back to uh, a manageable level um, with the disease. And I thought to myself, now, why couldn't people do this? As a last-ditch measure, they tried to see if conditioning would work for Merit. Merit had to learn to associate a strong taste or smell with the effects of the steroid drug, which could slow down her runaway immune system. The conditioning appeared to work. Soon, just the taste or smell meant she was able to halve her dose of drugs. The impact of the immune conditioning was that at a very scary, terrifying time when not only Merritt, but the whole family felt really powerless. It was something that we participated in, in which she began to be in charge of her part of the treatment. Merritt died in 1995 on Valentine's Day of a heart attack, and the heart attack was precipitated um, by very simply clogged arteries, which is a side effect of the medication that we started trying to wean her from. I feel, looking back, that it was really a tremendous uh, step in the right direction. I would also say that she would agree that it gave her probably 10 years more life than um, we expected that she would have.